If I were to give an explanation of FuseNet to someone that had never heard of it, I would describe it as an activity that basically boils down to simply paying attention. Paying attention to the relevant variables such that we never again see famine occurring in the world. People have told me that if FuseNet didn't exist, it would have to be invented. The emergency situation in drought-stricken Ethiopia has been the focus of a great deal of attention. There is a drought swallowing up Africa. Each day, 35,000 people are dying of starvation. In Africa alone, there are 21 countries not able to feed their own people. 1984 was a big moment in the lives of agencies like USAID and others because press reports started coming out talking about a lot of suffering, famine, as a result of drought in Sudan and Ethiopia. The images that were coming out in the newspapers and some of the news reports that were coming out all suggested that there was great human suffering in Sudan. USAID, the US government, other governments in the world wanted to do something. So the design of FuseNet was made to pick up information from very local areas with an understanding of what type of problem there was, what it was due to, and a suggestion of how you would be able to resolve that issue. You know, FuseNet does a lot more now than just early warning, but what was needed at the time was a serious early warning system, and, and that's what Fuse gave the U.S. government. When we're doing decision support, we both need to do good analysis, and we need to figure out what is the most effective way to communicate that analysis to a range of different decision makers. When this first reporting was occurring in the mid-1980s, FuseNet would put together an in-depth report on current conditions and how we expected things to move in the future. And then starting in 1995, a transition was made to a FuseNet website. So this includes remote sensing data, price information, livelihood maps, and other kinds of reporting that's done by the project. Our job is to provide the information with the supporting evidence to decision makers so that they can have all the information that they need to make those decisions on response, on development, and on contingency planning. USAID makes billion dollar decisions based upon the information that is provided by FuseNet to determine where to send that food today, tomorrow, and to this country as opposed to that country. The hallmark of FUSE analysis is that we are evidence-based, and as a result, FUSE has developed a reputation of being unbiased. We put an emphasis on using the best science. For physical science, we work through USGS, the US Geological Survey, with NOAA and NASA to use remote sensing products so that we can have evidence for the agroclimatic factors of food security. One of our first major supports to the FUSE project was in supplying greenness maps, or also known as NDVI, Normalized Difference Vegetation Index maps. NDVI were very useful for monitoring crop conditions, basically showing the vigor and the health of the crop so they can see where it's greening up, when it's supposed to be greening up, and where it's not greening up when it should be. Today, we're able to deliver electronic products to our partners in the field. The importance of FuseNet information is that it can tell you where you do need to save lives with an immediate resource like food aid, but we also are now able to start speaking in terms of saving livelihoods. FuseNet's Livelihoods Framework is the framework for understanding household vulnerability to specific shocks. And what we mean by vulnerability is a household's ability to access food and cash income. And if we have an understanding of household vulnerability, then we can combine that with information on a level and extent of shocks. So price increases and how high prices may rise, how big of a decrease in crop production do we see, and then what does that mean for individual households. And by combining this information then we can determine what risk of food insecurity will be. We, we develop li livelihood uh, zoning in each country and uh, they allow us to capture 
the vulnerability, not only at the national level, but at the sub-national level. Including also the income activities and income generating activities at the household level to try to see not only the food availability, but also the income that will serve household, how to access the food. FuseNet resources are not unlimited. And that is why in all Fuse countries, we work through partnerships. We work with local organizations, we work with host governments. It did become apparent to many of us in the field that the future really in FuseNet was hiring national staff to replace expatriate staff. That to me was a very concrete and important step in the evolution of FuseNet. In our role as an implementing partner, in USGS has regional scientists in the field. These are professionals that are recruited locally and they have expertise in geography and meteorology and hydrology and they have a very important role in FuseNet. It was really the appropriate thing to do and there was nothing lost in the conversion. In fact, much was gained. Yesterday, oil hit a new record high of more than $100 In the fall of 2008, a credit squeeze ballooned into Wall Street's biggest crisis. Recently, prices. food price increases have For become more poor, pronounced. high food, food prices can mean deep poverty, hunger, and malnutrition. The future for FuseNet is really related to what's going on in the world. With the global financial crisis of 2008, we are seeing food security problems popping up in different countries where we do not normally think of as food insecure. And that is why FUNET is now piloting an effort called remote monitoring, where we work with international and local partners in different countries to monitor the factors, the anomalies that may lead to a food problem. FUSENET has to anticipate that there will be new countries, new populations, who because of the changing nature of the global market may become food insecure. And I think uh, projects like FuseNet have a real opportunity now to demonstrate how food security information system can also be used for longer term development goals, including uh, poverty reduction, uh, agricultural growth, and, and adaptation to climate change. Uh, information is the building blocks that you need for, for wise policies. I think FuseNet is unique and plays a critical role in, in the world of food security because it is uh, an independent voice. FuseNet, for the people who are working in it, it's a very fulfilling place. And I'm happy what I'm doing because I'm helping people, I'm helping poor people, I'm saving lives. USAID has had the foresight to, uh, to finance FUSE. Uh, and to continue to, to finance it through 25 years. FuseNet has been a center of innovation over its last 25 years. It's, it's renowned for the, the new products and tools that it brings to this effort. Uh, it allows and it facilitates and it pushes people to innovate. If your benchmark for famine early warning is the, the great famine of the early 80s, in, in Africa, in particular in Ethiopia, where one million people died for lack of food, um, then unequivocally, FuseNet has been successful because nothing even approaching that in the least has occurred since. And I used a proverb from the Sahel, which uh, says that the first best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, uh, the second best time is now.